I rented a one million. I recreated every single set from Squid Game. You're not crazy. YouTube is changing. The current content creator landscape is evolving. And in this video, I'm going to attempt to break down what might be the new meta that'll take you from zero to millions of views in 2024. And no, that's not an exaggeration. For example, take this 21 year old from Ohio. If I told you one year ago that this guy's a YouTube genius, you'd probably have laughed in my face. Back then, Sam Sulek was filming crappy gym TikToks with his smartphone that got a few thousand views. But in the last 12 months, Sam's gone from zero to over 3 million subscribers. To put that into perspective, Perspective, Sam grew his channel five times faster than Mr. Beast. And what makes Sam's growth even more impressive is his videos are all extremely long and they have so little editing it makes JV want to cry into his pillow. And so I decided to study Sam and other top creators who are making this new type of content and I uncovered three big factors that every one of these channels is harnessing to blow up in 2024 with what seems like very low effort content. For example, let's take a closer look at Sam's channel. He currently sits at about 3 million subscribers and is growing at a rate of about 220,000 subscribers subscribers every month. As of recording this video, he's generated about 140 million views, which would have made him well over half a million dollars just in ad revenue. And that doesn't even include money got through sponsors or affiliate links. But the question is, how is Sam and all these other seemingly low effort channels pulling in such a crazy amount of views? Well, that brings us to our first factor. In recent years, visiting the YouTube homepage feels a bit like visiting a used car yard. Only instead of having to deal with loud manipulative salespeople trying to sell you a Corolla that looks like this, you're dealing with loud manipulative of YouTubers trying to sell you on watching their videos all the way to the end. And they do that with screaming, explosions, overlays, text, 200 cuts per minute, and a gazillion other YouTube retention hacks all rolled up into one big dopamine burrito of stimulation. And even though this dopamine heavy style of content still gets a lot of views and is very impressive, some viewers like me find this content kind of soulless, over the top, and exhausting to watch. So when you come across a creator like Sam, who's at the complete opposite end of this mystery to beastification spectrum, it's like a breath of fresh air. Because Sam's ditched this dopamine burrito for, well, just being a super genuine real dude. In other words, he's truly authentic. His videos are hardly edited, and to call his tiles and thumbnails primitive is an insult to primitive people. But when watching one of his videos, it feels like you're just hanging out with a friend or a cool mentor. And more and more channels are adopting this more authentic, low effort style of content as it's becoming popular with viewers like me. And when YouTube detects that something's becoming more popular with viewers, the algorithm starts plugging that content to tens of millions of people. And even creators like Mr. Beast, who started this whole trend of overstimulating content, have noticed this shift in the market. For example, in one of his most recent videos, he actually breaks down in tears multiple times. Something that would have been unheard of six or 12 months ago in a Mr. Beast video. So am I saying that the new YouTube meta is to just be authentic, edit videos lazily, and bam, millions of views? Well, right now I'm sensing a shift in the YouTube community where we're beginning to pedestalize authenticity in an authenticity equals views in 2024 kind of way. But my controversial opinion, based on my analysis, is this is an incredibly surface level and naive analysis of what's actually going on. And that's because of the second big factor I discovered when analyzing Sam and these other more authenticity based channels. And let me prove it to you. Let's imagine an alternate universe where Sam Sulek also exists, is exactly as authentic as he is in this universe, creates the exact same content, exact same length, exact same editing style. The only difference is, in this alternate universe, Sam doesn't take steroids. So instead of looking like this, he looks more like this. Not to say there's anything wrong with looking like this, I would be very happy to look like this. But the question is, in this alternate universe where Sam's authenticity is exactly the same as it is in this one, would he get anywhere near the amount of attention his current channel has? Here's another question. The first time you see a Sam Sulek thumbnail, do you think, wow, that man is so damn authentic? Or do you think, god freaking damn, I didn't know the whole cat of child? Even someone like me who's just not that interested clearly in bodybuilding content, clicked on one of Sam's videos when I first saw it on my homepage because I just had to know who the hell is this machine of a man. Now, after I clicked on that video, sure, his personality and authenticity drew me in and kept me watching his video. But if Sam didn't look like this in the first place, I would never have clicked on his video and so I would never have been exposed to his authenticity. And I say this with the utmost respect for Sam and his content. He's a phenomenal athlete and creator, but the YouTube education community needs to acknowledge that there's a lot Lot more behind Sam's success than just, oh, he's authentic. But not all of these authenticity channels are run by creators who are absolutely ripped. So what is the secret source they're all using? Well, I think I've narrowed it down to two big factors. 
Firstly, if you want to grow quickly by going down this authenticity route, you also need to have objectively interesting video ideas or X factors that are appealing to a large niche of people. And you usually need to be able to give those people a taste of what that X factor or idea is through your title and thumbnail. Now, Sam's video ideas in and of themselves aren't that interesting, but he has a massive X factor that is his body, and that's enough to make his video objectively interesting enough to want to click on it. But the lesson to learn here is not that you need to look like Sam, it's that your content needs to revolve around something objectively interesting. For example, this is Dra this is Dwayne from the Dwayne from the Dry Creek. This is Dwayne from the Dry Creek Wrangler School. Fuck, that's hard to say. <laughs> He's just a dude sitting in a chair or barn for 20 plus minutes talking about life and horses. Oh, and did I mention he's gone from zero to almost a million subscribers in just two years? Now at face value, it might seem like Dwayne's just authenticity his way to success. But let's actually think about this for a second. A lot of young men right now are going through quarter life existential crises. Regardless of what you think about them, the meteoric rise of male role models like Andrew Tate illustrate a huge gap in the market for strong male role models who speak directly to young men who feel worthless, lonely, and just unsure of the role they're meant to play in society. So when Dwayne, a kind, strong, substitute father looking figure comes along and directly addresses these issues, men flock to him. So is Clay's channel really blowing up just because of his authenticity? Or is it blowing up because he's stumbled on a massive gap in the market that he perfectly fills? Let's put it another way. If Clay made videos in the exact same style he currently has with the exact same level of authenticity, but instead of giving philosophical existential advice to men, he's documenting his winter bowl. Do you think that video would get many views? Probably not, because despite his authenticity, Dwayne doesn't have the same X factors as Sam. Again, I'm not trying to make less of Dwayne's success here, but it does seem that his ability to identify and confront topics that millions of young men are struggling with, aka inherently interesting video ideas, could actually be the primary reason for his success. Another great example of this is The Wizard Liz. She's gone from zero to over 5 million subscribers in a little over a year with long, practically unedited aside from a few subtitles, talking head videos. And if you've never watched her before, she's not afraid to speak her mind or even share controversial opinions about issues affecting women. And she's funny and charismatic. You're a simp. And while I'm sure all of these things have played a role in her success. Simp. If we take a step back and analyze the niche, young girls nowadays are constantly bombarded with advertisements and social media posts that sub-communicate a ridiculously high standard of how they should be looking and acting. And unfortunately, a lot of these young women don't feel like they measure up to these standards, which makes sense because these standards are are crazily unrealistic. And so their confidence is through the floor and EDs are through the roof. So in Liz, a super attractive, confident young woman who actually once suffered from an ED herself, she attracts a massive amount of attention. And when you boil it down, the videos of hers that have all really blown up revolve around, surprise, fighting anxiety and building confidence, AKA inherently interesting topics for Liz's niche, which means viewers are much more likely to click on Liz's videos when they get exposed to them. And after they click, sure, then they get sold on Liz's magnetic personality. Obviously, these are all very oversimplified analyses, but what I think we can learn from all of these creators is while authenticity is undoubtedly a big contributing factor to their success, having objectively interesting video ideas or X factors is potentially even more important because if you don't have that, people won't click on your videos in the first place and therefore won't have an opportunity to be exposed to your authenticity or charisma. But that brings us to the next factor that has allowed creators like Sam to get so much promotion from the algorithm. And that is Sam and all these other authenticity tubers are watch time machines. Now watch time is the amount of time a viewer spends watching a video. So for example, if you have a one minute video and one viewer watches that video all the way to the end, that's going to give you one minute of watch time, which I've made a video about if you want to dive deeper. And Sam has cracked this watch time code by doing two things. First, he creates very long videos, which gives him the opportunity to generate an insane amount of watch time per viewer. When someone clicks on a Sam Sulek video, if they watch that video all the way to the end, that single viewer can give Sam 30 minutes, 45 minutes, or even over an hour of watch time. And when the average long form YouTube video is about 11.7 minutes long, this means Sam's videos are getting four to five times more more watch time than the average video, which basically gives the algorithm a hard on. And the same goes for all these other authenticity tubers. While they're not creating videos as long as Sam, their videos are significantly longer than the average 11.7 minutes.
minutes, meaning they have the opportunity to get substantially more watch time per viewer. And even creators like Mr. Beast, Dude Perfect, Ryan Trahan, compare the length of their videos a few years ago when they first started to how long their videos are now, and you'll see they're all making longer videos. And it's not a coincidence. But just making longer videos doesn't guarantee that you're gonna get more promotion from the algorithm, because if someone clicks on your 45 minute video but doesn't watch it all the way to the end, you don't get any watch time, and the algorithm will hate you. And that leads us to the second reason why Sam Sulek is a watch time machine. And that is he and all these other authenticity tubers are very talented speakers. Not in a public speaking, TEDx sort of ninja way, but in a one way conversation skills kind of way. Creators like Sam are naturally amazing storytellers and they can generate a non-stop stream of content just off the top of their head and phrase it and structure their words in a way that makes you want to keep watching. So it doesn't matter how authentic you are, if you can't articulate yourself in an engaging way, people just aren't gonna wanna watch. Now from working with my students, I have found that this skill comes more naturally to some people than others, but it is a skill nonetheless, meaning that you can acquire it with practice. Also try to learn basic storytelling frameworks. The human mind thinks in stories. So if you can formulate and order your information and the order in which you speak things so that it fits a basic story structure, you'll find that people will be way more engaged even if you're saying the exact same thing as you were before when it wasn't formulated as a story. And if you wanna learn one of my favorite storytelling formulas for beginner YouTubers, I'll leave a video up on screen. In it, I'll walk step by step through a simple four step structure you can apply to your next YouTube video to make it more engaging, retain more viewers, get more watch time, which will give you more promotion from the YouTube algorithm. Check it out.